And today's lesson is Christmas or Sinmas. You cannot keep Christmas. The two Babylons by Alexander Hillsop. The worship of Nimrod is a biblical figure mentioned in the book of Genesis and books of Chronicles. The son of Cush and therefore a great grandson of Noah, Nimrod was described as a king in the land of Shinar, Mesopotamia. The Bible states that he was a mighty hunter before the Lord, and began to be mighty in the earth. Later extra-biblical traditions identified Nimrod as the ruler who commissioned the construction of the Tower of Babel, which led to his reputation as a king who was rebellious against God. You see, folks, this right here is what Christmas is all about. The worship of Nimrod. We're going to go to page 93 to the circle part and let's get some understanding about Nimrod and December 25th and Christmas. How then did the Ramesh Church fix on December the 25th as Christmas Day? Why thus, long before the 4th century and long before the Christian era itself, a festival was celebrated among the heathen at that precise time of the year in honor of the birth of the son of the Babylonian Queen of Heaven. And it may fairly be presumed that in order to consolate the heathen and to swell the number of the nominal adherents of Christianity, the same festival was adopted by the Roman Church, giving it only this name of Christ. This tendency on the part of Christians to meet paganism halfway was very early developed. So you see, this heathenistic pagan holiday was conceived long before Christianity. Somehow they preach in the Christian church that Jesus was born December the 25th. Hmm. Let us get into that. That Christmas was originally a pagan festival is beyond all doubt. The time of the year and the ceremonies with which it is still celebrated prove its origin. In Egypt, the son of Isis, the Egyptian title for the Queen of Heaven, was born at this very time, about the time of the winter solstice. The very name by which Christmas is popularly known by among ourselves, Yule Day, proves at once its pagan and Babylonian origin. Yule is the Chaldee name for an infant or little child. Don't they say Yule Tidings? And you think it has everything to do with Christmas. But we see here that Yule is the childy word for an infant or a little child. Let's find out what infant or little child we're talking about. This is page 98 of the same book. Read. Must be remembered that the divine child born at the winter solstice was born as a new incarnation of the great God. After that, God had been cut in pieces on purpose to revenge his death upon his murderers. Now the great God cut off in the midst of his power and glory was symbolized as a huge tree stripped of all its branches and cut down almost to the ground. The divine child born at the winter solstice was born as a new incarnation of the great God. After that, God had been cut in pieces. During Right here, this is talking about the slaying of Nimrod. Nimrod was cut to pieces. The Christmas tree, as has been stated, was generally at Rome a different tree, even the fir. But the very same idea as was implied in the palm tree was implied in the Christmas fir, for that covertly symbolized the newborn God as Baal Beeren, Lord of the Covenant. You guys go get Christmas trees, put them inside your house. But here it's saying that the Christmas tree hmm, is for the newborn God as 
ball brief. Therefore, the 25th of December, the day that was observed at Rome as the day when the victorious God reappeared on earth, was held at the Nautilus Invicti Solus, the birthday of the unconquered sun. Now the Yule Log is the dead stock of Nimrod, deified as the sun god, but cut down by his enemies. The Christmas tree is Nimrod Redivinus, the slain god come to life again. You guys are worshiping Nimrod, and the tree that you put in your house is Nimrod. He's a representation of Nimrod. This has nothing to do with Jesus. It has everything to do with the Babylonian nothing burger named Nimrod, who's dead and long gone. And even after this, you know what you guys are saying? I do it for the kids. It don't matter. Now's a long time ago. I do. You're worshiping. I'll say it again. Ball Barith. The Lord says, don't have any other gods before me. Let me tell you what the Most High had to say. He told you not to envy the oppressor. And we're going to get that in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 31. It says, envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Who's your oppressor, Israel? I'm not talking to the Edomites. I'm talking to you Negroes who were placed in captivity and we're still in captivity the Lord says don't choose his religions or his philosophies or his policies or his politics that's what the most high said but are we listening to the most high no in fact know this to be true folks the Lord told us not to do their customs. And let's find out. Let me get the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 1. Read. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 1. Hear the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with, with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. So what is the Lord saying here, folks? During this time, the Israelites were about to go into Babylonian captivity. So the Lord says, don't do what they do. Don't do their customs. He even said, don't be dismayed at the, the signs in the heavens. When the Bible says heathens, it's not just talking about sinners. It's also talking about other nations. So this nation that you guys are about to go into right now, that the Lord is sending you to, don't do what they do. Don't be dismayed or, or uh, amazed at the stars, the moons, the sun, and anything in the heavens. You know, solar eclipses, lunar eclipses, or even the blood moon. The Lord says that the customs of the heathen are vain, meaning they are worthless. They're worthless lies. This scripture is clearly talking about the pagan celebration of Christmas. It even talks about cutting down a tree where people get palm trees that were cut down and placed in their homes and decked with silver and gold. Isn't that what the script said? It even speaks about trees being nailed to the floor so they don't move around. But it also tells you, don't worry, the trees can't do evil. The Bible says that trees do not speak. There was a belief that the spirit of Nimrod will come into the tree and talk to you, right? Nimrod, because he sees you when you're sleeping and he knows when you're awake, right? Like, like that kind of stuff. This is clearly talking about 
sinless. And you know what's funny, right? December the 25th is in the dead of winter. And they lie and say that Christ was born in the dead of winter. But the Bible doesn't say that he was born in the dead of winter. As a matter of fact, it says he's born in the spring, in the month of a bee, during the Passover. We can get that in the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 40. Read. The book of Luke chapter 2 verse 40. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. So he turned 12. And watch this. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. When he was born on the Passover in the spring. So where the heck are you guys getting that he was born in the dead of winter, December the 25th? You mean when Nimrod was born? The Messiah turned 12 on the Passover. He was born in the spring in the month of Abib during the Passover. Revelation chapter 18 verse 4, read. The book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. If you don't want to receive the plagues of the heathens, look at what happened with Egypt. He sent pestilence, insects, botches, sore botches. He, the darkness was so thick you could feel the darkness that he sent he had all the food eaten up he turned the water into blood and so the lord is saying if you don't want none of the plagues of the enemy these are the enemies of the lord yes you egyptians are the enemies of the most high he said come out of her all you negroes live in babylon the great and you Israelites that are around the world, you guys live in nations that are part of the Ten Toes and everybody lives deliciously off of Babylon the Great. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're still in Africa. It doesn't matter if you're in London. It doesn't matter where you're at. If you are a wheat, if you are a sheep on the right hand side, you are one of the children of God, you're an Israelite, then you have to come out of her, the daughter of Babylon, and all of her wicked ways. It's their political, religious, philosophical policies. You gotta separate yourself from it. Christmas or sinmas? It's sinmas. It is a sin to keep this wicked holiday. And with that, shalom.